it is dropping 50. Has the West's best team rolling again? They were saying, go get 50. <laughs> so at that point, you try to go get 50. Don't throw a duck in the game because that's going to be on ESPN, not top 10. I'm going to have my fair share of scaffs tonight and feel good about being 10 and 3. While you were sleeping, or at least should have been, Anthony Davis with the crispy 50 piece in LA's 142 125 win against El Cato Grande and the Minnesota Timberwolves. He's done it three times prior in his almost eight season NBA career, but last night doing it for the first time in the purple and gold. Spanish. And that was the only thing that happened that day, all day. Yeah, sure. In sports yesterday. Okay. Actually, not really. Yeah. El Duncan, uh, Gary Shrysky with you this morning on SportsCenter. San Francisco and New Orleans doing their best AD impressions earlier in the day, trying to put up <laughs> 50 apiece themselves. Yeah, it was basically like the thrill in Manila with a side of red beans and rice. Two heavyweights, countless haymakers. Let's pick it up at the beginning. Game of the year, not a question mark. 100% an emphatic statement. First quarter, Superdome lit. Game already tied at seven. It's first and 10 from the 26 for Drew Brees, who finds Jared Cook, had already connected with Jared Cook for a touchdown in the game. That's Ooh. the second one. Beautiful catch by Cook, but he stays down after the play. And if you take another look, he gets hit hard pretty bad in the head by Akella Witherspoon at the end of the play. So he'd leave the game with a concussion, all right, which was huge down the stretch. Drew Brees said so himself. How about Emmanuel Sanders on the other side? With the Niners trailing 20 to seven, Jimmy G drops back and finds Sanders wide open. He gets up, he's untouched, and runs it in oh. for the 75-yard touchdown. Von Bell somewhere in a film room like, uh-oh. 49ers cut the lead 20 to 14 later on. Niners still trailing. Garoppolo to Debo to Sanders on the reverse, and he throws to Raheem Mostert in the end zone, something they've been practicing per Manny Sanders after the game. I was like, man, don't throw a duck in the game because that's going to be on ESPN, not top 10. <laughs> Third player all time with 150 receiving yards, a receiving touchdown, and a passing touchdown in the same game. Under a minute to play. First and goal, San Francisco. There he is, Mostert with the handoff, the 10 yard touchdown run. First half featured eight combined touchdowns and only four combined incompletions, and we had ourselves a barn burner. To the third quarter we go after an Alvin Kamara fumble. Niners down two, first and goal, finds George Kittle. That would be a significant connection down the stretch as well, but a big one there. Niners now up 35 to 30, but here is the controversy at the end of the third. So the Saints are back to punt. That's Taysom Hill in the backfield. He's going to fake the punt and then throw to Traquan Smith. That looks like textbook pass interference, right? He's smothering him. Here's the thing, though. By rule, pass interference cannot be called on a punt formation. There's the kicker. Yeah, here's Sean Payton not exactly happy about it. I don't want to answer one officiating question today, so I won't. Keep going. Sorry. So no flags come out, Gary. Niners get the ball. Significant. Okay, then. Tap me in. Here we go. And soon we drive third and eight from the 14. Jimmy Garoppolo finding Kyle Juszczyk, the Harvard legend, rolling out, trying to make something happen. A flag comes out upon the incompletion. CJ Gardner Johnson gets called for the unnecessary roughness. Uh, Peyton does not agree. 49ers get another set of downs. Now on second and goal, Garoppolo finding Kendrick Bourne for the score. Niners capitalizing on the penalties. Now lead 42-33. Ensuing Saints possession. First and 10 from the 35 breeze. Uh, finding Michael Thomas. 49 yards later. That's good. Thomas had 11 catches, 134 yards. And the score, the score coming up right here. Later in the drive, second and 15 from the 21. There's Thomas, the made man. Saints cutting the lead to 42 to 40 with six minutes to play. This is shaping up like the person with the ball last is going to win. After a 49ers field goal, Saints showing 45-40 on 35 with a minute to play. Breeze finding Smith. That's just his second catch on the day. That's good to give the Saints the lead. They go for two. They don't convert. Breeze slips, throws in the completion. That keeps the score 46 to 45. Niners got the ball. Fourth and two on their own 33. Garoppolo finding Kittle again. Runs up the sideline for 39 yards. But wait, there's more. Another flag comes out and you saw it. It was blatant the whole way down. That's a personal foul. Face mask, Marcus Williams gets flagged for it. Robbie Gold comes on to kick what would be a game-winning 30-yard field goal. And what would be is snap good, kick good, 49ers pull out the dramatic win in New Orleans, 48-46. Kyle Shanahan, that was a cool game, right? That was as cool of a game as I've been a part of. Um, 
lot of emotions back and forth. Um, it'll probably hit me a little bit harder when I get on the plane. I wouldn't say it's a statement. I think it's a, it's a good step in the right direction. You know, it's, uh, we've got a couple games left here to finish the season out and everything and, you know, get into the playoffs. But, you know, it's, it, we're moving in the right direction at the right time. You're talking to me right after a tough loss. So uh, are you telling me how I'm supposed to feel? All right. I don't feel encouraged. All right. I feel frustrated because we had opportunities earlier in the game offensively to take advantage of field position. We had a number of opportunities. We had missed assignments. So, no, I'm not, I'm not encouraged that way. The 49ers and Saints combining for 94 points. That is the most points in a matchup between two teams that entered with at least 10 wins since the AFL-NFL merger. Both quarterbacks combining to throw nine touchdowns in the game featured four lead changes in the second half, including two in the game's final minute. That's literally how I felt after watching that game. Like, take a breath. <laughs> we say hello this morning to Tim Hasselbeck. Uh, Tim, what did you see from the Niners? What did they show you specifically on offense? Well, I think that's the key. We know they have a good defense. They just went on the road and scored nearly 50 points against a really good Saints defense. And I think we need to give credit to Kyle Shanahan in terms of his ability as a play designer and a play caller because – you know, what they're doing is a tried and true system in the NFL. It's the zone running attack, it's the move the pocket plays in terms of play action off of it. But there are little wrinkles that he is putting in there to create opportunities for guys like George Kittle. And then you see, you know, the way they're running the football with Mostert. And then when, you know, they feel like they can, they will end up, you know, calling a trick play, some type of gadget play and he's dialing them up at the right time. And so I think that they're designed well, they're schemed well, they're, uh, they're coached well, and then they're called at the right time. That's hard to do, and he's maybe doing it better than anybody else in the league right now. I feel like we're going to see this matchup later on in the playoffs, and I'm pretty sure as a consensus nobody would disagree uh, with yeah, that. Yeah, and that will be like a 10-3 like to three to game. Probably. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they used all their points up already. The tail of the tape. Uh, the win with San Francisco's first in New Orleans since 2014, and they gave the Niners their first 11-win season since 2013. Tim, thanks so much. Ahead on Sports Center AM, the Niners, a great day turning into a San Francisco treat. How Seattle's no-show has the Niners sitting pretty for now. Don't go anywhere, though, Tim, because Patriot panic. I mean, listen. It was I'm all well and it. good until it was Kansas City not having any of their equipment. <laughs> By the way, Minor this issue. is the Chiefs' <laughs> fault, okay? So, like, miss me with any of the conspiracy theories. It was their fault. Pat Mahomes seemed to have a little discomfort in the throwing hand. He was hurt there, but we pick it up in the second quarter with the Chiefs trailing 7-3. to three. Someone may be guard Nico Harmon, who cuts back and runs it in 47-yard touchdown. So the Chiefs take a 10-7 lead. Andy Reid is feeling it. First play of the ensuing Pats drive. Tom Brady looking for Matt Lacoste. He's intercepted mm. by Bashad Breeland. He said they threw a lot of different defenses at us. Some of them we handled well. Some of them we did not. I'd say that didn't go well. Ensuing Chiefs drive. Check out this play. Travis Kelsey lined up as the QB. Pat Mahomes behind him on third and goal. Kelsey takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and runs it in. First tight end to rush for a touchdown this season. That seems crazy. Chiefs with a creative play call, and they're up 17-7. to Patriots later booed in the locker room. Here's Tom Brady on that. Your cheers, your boos. It's part of being in sports. Uh, what, what was your reaction when uh, that happened after you guys uh, finished with the uh, seven points in the first half? Uh, you no, know, I tried to go in and play better, basically. I'm sorry, if anyone has immunity from being booed at home, shouldn't it be Tom Brady? Uh, apparently not, Al. Whatever. Third quarter, Chiefs leading by 10. Mahomes to Kelsey over the middle, and Kelsey loses the ball. This is why there's going to be a lot of talk today that the Patriots got hosed because Gilmore scoops it up. It's obviously a fumble. They would call it dead. They whistled it dead. They whistled it, which they yes, shouldn't do. They shouldn't do. So Bill Belichick ended up having to use a challenge. And, of course, they take a look at it, and they were like, yeah, no, that is definitely a fumble. But the problem is they had no challenges left. That's a problem because of this. Ensuing drive for the Pats, first and ten. Brady finds kill Harry. And it looks like he turns the corner and runs that guy in. But they said that he was short. And take a look. They're going to talk to each other. Now, later on, the explanation was that the covering official was blocked out by the defender. So he couldn't see that Nikhil Harry very clearly kept his foot in bounds. He did not step out of bounds. That should have been called a touchdown. Here's the issue. They could have reviewed it. They had no challenges left because, of course, they had to waste it on the Gilmore fumble. So instead of being a touchdown and tying this thing up, it's first and goal for the Patriots. Two plays later, second and goal. He's looking for Jacoby Myers as Brady, but he can't find it. So it's ruled incomplete. Obviously, that's an incompletion, but the Patriots settled for a field goal, and it's 23-16. to That was obviously significant. Brady would get one more chance, though. You're thinking it's Brady time. 
fourth and six. He drops back. Run. This is really when you're thinking he's breaking time. Run. Getting it done with his legs. The Clydesdale. What are you? What are you, Jacoby Brissett? Belichick's pumped. Everybody's pumped. Foxborough. They're ready. Fourth and three, though. The game on the line. Get it to Julian Edelman. Oh, but Bashad Breland again comes up clutch. He has a pick. He bats that one down. A great play by Breland. Brady, 169 yards, one touchdown, would have been two, but of course, that Nikhil Harry touchdown was called back. What was the explanation the officials gave you on that Nikhil Harry looked to be yeah, a touchdown? Yeah, you have to talk to them about that. I'm not going to speak for them. Bill, did the officiating make it hard to get any sort of tempo and flow in that second half? Yeah, I don't know. We all knew it was a touchdown. Everybody clearly saw that it was a touchdown, but like I said, it's, it's out of our control. There you go. I don't want to get fined. The loss snaps New England's 21-game home winning streak, which had been the third longest streak in NFL history. It's also the first time a QB as young as Mahomes have gone into Foxborough and won in the Belichick-Brady era. In fact, New England was 29-0 against QBs under 25 at home. And the Patriots' three losses have come against the other three division leaders in the AFC. Blown calls aside, Tim, okay? Mm -hmm. Tom Brady finishing with 169 yards passing. Third game this year where he was held under 200 yards, and he was sacked three times as well. What's most concerning about this Patriots offense in December in your mind? I think the biggest issue is how dejected everybody looks with how it's going. <laughs> the reality is they're 10 and 3. And we heard sound from Aaron Rodgers earlier at Sports Center, and he's like, Yeah, I'm going to have a couple, you know, I'm going to have a drink, and I'm going <laughs> to enjoy being 10 and 3. They played terrible against the Washington Redskins team that is not the caliber of the Kansas City Chiefs, but yet they seem to be happy that they're 10-3. Yeah. and three. I just think that maybe it's because they're looking around the division. Maybe it's because of, you know, who's, you know, the three losses are two and the fact that they maybe have to go on the road to play, you know, one or, you know, multiple of those teams. And so I think the bigger issue is that they just seem so beat up about the fact that this is what it is. They're a good football team that's going to the playoffs. So is, it, is the Super Bowl going to run through Foxborough? Probably not, but... I, I just think, you know, maybe it's because of what the standard was. Maybe guys are, are banged up. Are they playing great on offense? No, but there's other aspects of this team that are good. I'm surprised they seem so dejected, even sometimes in wins, about how the offense is played. We've seen it just a few years ago, right? An offense that wasn't so great, but with a really good defense, win the Super Bowl in the Broncos. There's nothing and, stopping and the Patriots. And can turn it on a little bit in the postseason offensively. Tom Brady doesn't drink scotch, but maybe he should start. <laughs> Still early. Uh, thanks, Tim. Still ahead. He'll have an, he'll have an avocado martini. <laughs> Those are delicious. Commiserate. Uh, AD with his best night yet for the Lakers. How he and LeBron are taking it back to the glory days of Kobe and Shaq. Plus, the Rams looking like their Super Bowl squad of last year. What LAZ racing up Seattle means for the 